Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode powered by Hayabusa is all about is there still room for traditional martial arts in modern MMA? In today's episode, we're breaking down traditional martial arts and if there's still room for them in modern MMA. In the past, growing up, you saw traditional martial arts gyms everywhere, Kung Fu, Karate, Taekwondo, and they were very popular. As the UFC and mixed martial arts started to gain steam and momentum, you realize these karates, these traditional martial arts have died off. Now, you'll still see a lot of young children in them, but as we get into the teenage years, we automatically start transitioning into kickboxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, you know, and now UFC MMA style training, okay? I was one of those people who started traditional martial arts. I started Taekwondo at seven years old, black belt at 10, second degree black belt at 14, but at that age, it wasn't fun, it wasn't cool enough. I needed that full contact feeling, and that's when I transferred over to one, jujitsu first, and then I went over to kickboxing at 19 years old. So I got to see the benefits, you know, transfer over from that early age. Now, today's video is more about how can I use the principles, the old school thought of traditional martial arts in modern MMA, okay? So are, do, am I asking you to go back and to get your karate and taekwondo gis on to start practicing katas? No, but there still is some room for it to benefit, and now, just an example to bring out, we talked about modern MMA. Who uses the traditional side? We saw guys like Lyoto Machida use his karate style very well. Let's talk about Michael Venom Page and Raymond Daniels. Still a point karate background with a traditional art to it, right? So we see these types of things being used really well. We saw Tony Ferguson in his training camp use Wing Chun and the wooden dummy to be able to practice some of his hand fighting. So there still is some principles that some of us think might be new, but these are really old principles that come from the traditional arts. Traditional, you know, Kyokushin Karate was what was used to bring into K1 kickboxing and now Glory Kick kickboxing. Kyokushin Karate was the style they used to make modern kickboxing. So let's get into some of the things. I'm going to give you five different areas of the traditional arts where I think they can benefit you in traditional arts and MMA. So the first thing in traditional martial arts is you learn the emphasis on stance, right? When I did Taekwondo, we had a walking stance. We had an L stance. We had different stances that we had to practice. And not only did we just do them, we had to discuss it. So the L stance, the back foot angle is on a 45 degrees, front foot pointing forward. The waist distribution is 70-30. So we had to know weight distribution, foot angle, balance, structure. So from a young age and even now, when I'm teaching all these, you know, even pro fighters, they lack that understanding of balance and structure in the feet. The first thing I ask an adult to get in a fight stance, right away they put their heels together so their balance is off. So that emphasis on strong grounding, strong stance, the differences in stance, offensive and defensive stance is all very important. There are different stances and they all change slightly. To understand them all and to be able to use them properly is very efficient in the traditional martial arts. What's the first thing you learn in karate? The horse stance, right? Good balance, good structure, where are your hands? Everything is nice and powered and grounded. That's the belief of the traditional martial arts. Now, the second thing we learn in those traditional traditional martial arts that's really missing now is that discipline, respect, and structure, okay? A lot of times now people look at grappling and kickboxing classes as a fitness thing, right? Which is nice, right? We're getting all of these new type of members coming in and training to want to lose weight, but it's taking away the actual art of it sometimes. So bringing in the structure, the discipline, something very simple like even everyone standing in a structured line. A lot of old school martial arts came from military background, right? Taekwondo was used for military strategy. So what you want to do is now understand that. Same thing with Muay Thai, right? Muay Baran, all these types of things. So you got to be able to use the martial arts but still instill it in your members. Standing in a line, having a little simple bow, these little things. Having your members address you as Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so or hello sir. These are all types of things that all can help you, you know. The little thing when your instructor's talking and you're standing, you know, in an unstructured like this, that doesn't show discipline and respect. To traditional martial arts, if your instructor's talking, you're standing in a nice strong command position, you look dominant, you look confident, 
and you're showing the respect. You're not scratching your face. I used to have to do push-ups. If, if my instructor was talking, I even scratched my nose. I'm doing push-ups. My uniform used to, I came in and as, as a funny story with my uniform wrinkled. I'm a 10-year-old kid. I don't do my own laundry. My mom did it. Next thing you know, my instructor did not like the wrinkles in my uniform. I had to clean the whole gym, wipe down the trophies. I could not participate in class until I cleaned the entire gym because my uniform was dirty. Never again did I go to Taekwondo with a wrinkled uniform. Yes, that was my mom's fault at that time, but it was still teaching you to be presentable, disciplined, and respect. So a little bit of that could benefit you in the long run in your modern day mixed martial arts. All right, now the third thing we're gonna learn is strike and return. Now every time you kick, boom, and you come back to that stance, it's very important, okay? Too many times when we're kicking, we're falling, we're off grounded. So in the, mar the traditional martial arts, you learn to snap and come back. Hua, hua. Everything is snap and return. If you kick, you come back right down to the stance, right? And a lot of that is taught to you in patterns and katas, right? So in patterns and katas, everything has to be a firm, perfect stance. And usually at the end of your pattern, you should end up in the exact same spot. So some of the training I did as a young kid was practicing my katas blindfolded. Now once you take the, you put a little piece of tape on the ground, once you're done your kata, you take off your blindfold and you look down, you should be at that exact same spot you started. So stance, very important, structure, come back to your stance. How many times do we see people kicking and just falling down, not returning to be structured, okay? That comes a lot of time from the traditional martial arts. Now the fourth thing that is kind of missed is the attention to detail. Now. In the traditional martial arts, as I mentioned earlier, everything is precise. Everything has a place and everything is understood. Now, what happens, like even a walking stance with a nice rear punch, right? You need to know where your rear hand is, okay? Where are your knuckle placement in? Is it a full extension? Where are your eyes? Are your knuckles in line? Where is your weight di distribution? Is your knee on top of your toe? Is your back heel up? All of these little things and that attention to detail to kick and return is very important. So analyze. It's nice to learn you know, all the strikes, but each strike has to be broken down. I've been studying martial arts now for over 30 years, okay? And I still want to perfect my round kick, right? That is the, the strive for perfection. That attention to detail is so very important. Now, yes, we all want to learn the spinning kicks, the spin elbows, but practice and pay attention to your detail and it's gonna help you. Remember, that martial arts isn't a crash course, right? It's like a doctrine. You take your time, you need to study, you need to perfect, you need to learn based on your strengths and weaknesses, right? So study, learn, and pay attention to detail. Now, the fifth and final thing I'm gonna kinda explain to you is the idea of snapping, okay? Impact. Now, when you talk about the modern martial arts, right? Most people, when it comes to striking, you're gonna do kickboxing, Muay Thai, or boxing, right? The first thing that you learn in those arts is how hard and much power you can really generate, right? In boxing, load up your hips, power, turn, rotate, that Muay Thai round kick, known as the most devastating, most powerful kick, right? You drive everything, all your power through it. But a lot of times, that isn't the best kick. You have to be able to mix and match. If I throw a power round kick and my opponent moves, I might be off balance. So the old school traditional kick snap is very important. If I'm power roundhousing and I wanna come back to my stance, it's very difficult. All my weight, all the momentum's going forward. So learning the snap from the traditional martial arts is very important. The impact, right? Not pushing through the technique, snap, snap is very important. Now even when it comes to boxers, and I'm gonna call boxers out on this little point now, boxers, every time they punch, because they punch in volume, everything is short, right? Even in Muay Thai, uh -huh, everything is nice and short with elbows. But the traditional martial arts teach you extension. So snap, snapping, breaking boards, full extension. That full extension is very important. So snap and come back. That impact can do more damage than the actual hard pushing shot itself. Hit in return does better than pushing, okay? More of that power, hit return, and get you know, more knockouts quicker, it's faster. You might lose power, but there is room for that snapping of the technique, right? And snap, 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 punches, kicks, you know, boom! Kicking rather than that whole boom, 
Okay, so there is room for that type of snapping type of techniques. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's episode on understanding the differences, right? Yes, it's 2021 now, but using some of those old school principles from those traditional martial arts is just gonna help your training now. Yes, I can get into a lot more detail, but I think these five really will benefit you to add a little bit of it into your training. All right, hope you enjoyed today. Let's keep liking, subscribing, following, do all that fun stuff for me, and make sure you head over to one, bazookatraining.com, where you can get all these, you know, learning and episodes from me, right? Each week I release four new videos, a home workout, a bag workout, tutorials, sparring drills, so you get four brand new videos each and every Monday for only $9.99 US per month. Okay, YouTube videos, I just teased the idea. Bazookatraining.com is when you get the structure, the learning, the curriculum on how to use it, implement it, and become a way better fighter, that's for sure. Okay, and we gotta thank Hayabusa by going to HayabusaFight.com, checking out their T3 boxing glove line, Perfect Sports Nutrition, Bazooka 20, 20% 20 off your supplements, all linked below, so don't worry about that. We have Bazooka Shop as well to get your Bazooka merch, and we'll see you next week after all of this talking, get to training, add some old school into the new school. Welcome to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA Online Training. I'm Bazooka Joe Veltolini, the owner here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over the past year, I've designed and created a website to teach Bazooka curriculum at home and across the world. The purpose of this website is for you to one, hit your fitness and health goals, all while learning world-class martial arts instruction from me. The beautiful thing about this website, it's geared for all levels. So if you're learning martial arts for the first time as a beginner, we help you progress into the bigger stages. And if you're a pro fighter, guess what? We have different fight concepts for you to improve your tool set and your skills in the ring or cage. As the fastest rising kickboxing world champion and a lifelong martial artist with over 30 years of experience, I've been able to combine my passion for martial arts and teaching to create this website. This website's gonna give you some of the tricks, secrets, and inside look at some of the training I use to win my world title. Once you subscribe to this site, you're gonna be getting weekly training videos and tutorials that you can do from anywhere. The sections are broken up into three parts. The first is bag workout. So if you have a bag at home or at your gym, you can use these workouts to supplement your training. The second is at home workouts. A lot of us don't have the room for a bag or a bag in general, so these workouts are for no equipment needed and you can do them anywhere. And finally, the tutorial section. If you're having any problems with a specific technique or fight concept that's covered in any of the workouts, go to the tutorial section, learn the technique, and then go back to the workout, and this time, do it with proper technique. One of the added benefits once you subscribe is the forum section, where you can get a more personalized experience where you can ask questions, and I'll be able to go in there and answer them. It's all about building a team and a community of martial artists helping each other grow. So subscribe now to get access to all the videos plus more so you can be part of the squad here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.